uh, check it out later. Okay, so I guess we can get started. So this year, uh, we have Grace uh, quite relative uh, small competition in terms of scale and participation uh, and efforts put into compared to the last couple of years. Uh, but we have made quite a few uh, technical improvements uh, uh, with the competition and along with our presentation, you might be able to see, see the details. So uh, this, this year we will keep the uh, live session relatively short, shorter than previous years. Uh, we will go through what the competition overview, uh, what the current Grace framework look like and what are some of the results we received this year, uh, some of the future work we might be doing, and last part will be answer some questions uh, if there's any. So we have, <coughs> so Grace is one of the uh, autonomous competition uh, among many, but it ha it's unique from others in that the, uh, we, we are testing participants' ability to write controllers uh, regardless of, we, we will provide the uh, participants with the ground truth perception data and focusing on the controller synthesis part. So we have been through all of this. And like I said, uh, we provide our perception oracle to the competitors uh, and they need to write a controller from this perception oracle that gives the ground truth information. So there are tracks with like a non-static obstacle and dynamic scenarios. Uh, although in the in the uh, in the in the simple test case we provide on the website, uh, leaderboard and submission website, we only tested the non obstacle scenario. We also have the uh, dynamic obstacle scenario as well. Uh, like we said, we can run this across multiple vehicles and tracks. Uh, the metric uh, are from each race are collected, scores are assigned, and yeah. those are uh, not only for this competition, it's also benefiting my uh, my research project uh, a lot. I will br also briefly talk about that in the end. Uh, so scores will be updated to the leaderboard as we already uh, published on the websites uh, when the controllers are submitted. Uh, Theoretically, we could make everything automated uh, as we are seeing the next slide, how it works. Uh, but given some budget issues, like we uh, we periodically just run it uh, instead of running it 24 and 7. So yes, we have a large email list and this is a, a QR code you can scan if you want to uh, know more about the Grace uh, competition. So, so the, some of the information on last year's Grace competition. Uh, basically, last year was a uh, uh, quite success, and we have also developed several uh, mm -hmm. outreach, huh? outreach, no, okay. outreach activities. Uh, we What's have. Uh, yeah, it's just, I can't to... hear them very well. If you want, but uh, like it's only Estan and me and the two oh, okay, yeah. people who were. I mean, I'm. Yeah, I mean, but you should stay in there, right? Otherwise, I feel pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's yeah. in real though, huh? Yeah. yeah, they want to announce the results. Is it in person? Uh, online. Online. As long yeah. as you could mute yourself, please. Thank you. Yeah, that's why I said you should stay in <laughs> there. <right? laughs> you should stay in there. Oh. Okay. Okay, uh, cool. So, and the submitted controller, by the way, is also becomes a benchmark for testing and verification research. This is exactly the kind of research I've been uh, working on. Uh, so those controllers are also of valuable assets to the research purpose on top of uh, the competition and the uh, uh, outreach, uh, uh, outreach committee committees uh, uh, activities as well. So, so basically, uh, how everything works is that we have a perception oracle. We have uh, set up some scenarios, obstacles. Uh, we have also uh, many different testing tracks. How it works is basically our perception oracles 
uh, fetch from the color simulator color server with the ground truth of cycle information, track information, uh, and organize that as an input to your controller. Uh, participants need to write a controller file in Python script. Uh, in this year, we are just requiring one single Python file. And this Python file, the output of the uh, user written Python file will give us some control values that will uh, send back to the color server, uh, which color server will use to update for the next frames information, uh, render new data, uh, get new, uh, get new uh, obstacles information that's feeding to the color API again and completes the uh, whole testing loop. And like I said before, uh, everything else is taken care of uh, by the color server and us. Uh, evaluation part and perception oracle are done by us. The color simulator will provide uh, the, the ground truth data. Uh, so the only thing the participants need to worry about are the controller Python files, which takes in the uh, obstacle information, uh, waypoints information, and uh, produce the control values. So this is a simple visualization of how, what the controller input and output is. Uh, basically, we, we provide on the left is a, a simple uh, screenshot of the Python script. Uh, basically, the users will have information about uh, obstacles, waypoints, velocity, uh, your current position, what's the land boundary. Uh, on the right, this is a visualization of all the inputs I just talked about. Uh, green arrow indicates your current yard, yard which is your uh, vehicle's heading. Uh, the black arrow indicates your velocity vector. The velocity vector uh, indicates like your current velocity. Uh, the blue dots is also what we provide to the as an input to the controller file, which are the future reference points, uh, the uh, the the land boundary of the whole track. So based on those information. The controller needs to write out its uh, computes its control value, which are basically throttle, brake, and steering. So for for this year, since we are only uh, using one vehicle, one Tesla Model Three uh, model to evaluate, so we didn't proceed with uh, the Arcman control. Basically, we just asked the us uh, users to produce the three values that will navigate through the all tracks because we are only using one vehicle to evaluate. And another huge feature we have this year, uh, rather than uh, compared to the previous years, are that we automate it, automate the whole uh, testing pipeline starting from submission to the leaderboard. Uh, basically, whenever so that the only thing appear to the participants are the two websites, but on the back end we did a lot of things. So let me first work through uh, the whole testing pipe the testing pipeline process. Uh, whenever the users, whenever users uh, submit uh, the controller file, uh, Python file to our submission server, uh, as a set of actions is triggered, uh, we get, we, we fetch the controller file into our testing servers, launch the simulator, uh, load the different tracks, different scenarios, different obstacles, execute the controller, uh, evaluate those performance of the controllers, and then uh, both email the results to the controller and display the results on the leaderboard website. So theoretically, like we said, uh, this is po it's possible to run this like 24 and seven, but uh, due to some budget issues on the display, uh, displayed uh, web hosting and uh, uh, the MongoDB database, uh, we are limiting some traffic so that we still manually run this. Uh, but every process, like everything in the in between, is already fully automated. So if we want, we can run this uh, with no problem uh, all the day. Whenever we have a large number of submission, so uh, and we have made a lot of improvements from previous year. Uh, on in terms of the technical side, for example, we removed the usage of ROS bridge completely. Uh, in previous year, like uh, many of the uh, data are sent through uh, on the basis of ROS, uh, using ROS topic and ROS node. Uh, and we discovered that ROS is a bottleneck that limits the execution speed of the whole simulation. 
So this year we basically removed the whole uh, ROS and using Kara API itself to uh, pass along the data. And as we showed in the last slide, we also automate the process from submission, evaluation, and leaderboard. So we are ne not need to manually run any submission ourselves. Uh, basically, uh, submission on the on the uh, submission website will trigger the whole testing pipeline and feedback. And also, we upgrade the uh, uh, Kara simulator to a newer version. We know that uh, 0.9.14 is already out, but when we did the updates, like it's it still has some bugs, so we stuck with 0.9.13. Uh, and according to the official release documents of uh, Kara and Scenario Runner, this version already has a um, uh, more stable and deterministic traffic manager, so which will also, as we can see, show lead to uh, more deterministic evaluation results. So we. Due to the uh, due to the uh, updated version of the simulator, we also have more fancier visualization, and on top of that, we also create a new track, a uh, more complicated track uh, that's mimicking the real Formula One track in Shanghai, uh, using a software called Roadrunner. Um, we create the new AWS image accordingly to. Uh, adapt to to take into consideration of all the other changes we talk about, and this is a demo video of how our how it works with uh, a baseline controller we have, mm -hmm. and we will see in the next slide how it works on the user submitted tours. Mm -hmm. So another uh, difference you might see in the next few slides is that. This video is taken, uh, is taken with uh, some screen recording software, so that it seems very smooth. And the videos I'm going to show in the next few slides is composed of, uh, composed of images taken along with the evaluation process. The reason of doing that is that, uh, is that if we do the screen recording, it's gonna slow down the execution time again. So we just take uh, using the car API to take the screenshot and make it into a video later. That's why you might see a little lagging and difference. So as we mentioned before, this year, uh, we only received one controller from uh, a Sony Brook, uh, but with five iterations over time. And uh, so this year we didn't get too much participation as previous year. Uh, uh, part of the reason is that like uh, our development team also has um, uh, people, uh, experienced people leaving and focusing on other stuff. Uh, but we might uh, bring new people in the coming year so that we want to uh, revive this uh, project as well. So this is the uh, results of the controller along uh, five different iteration on five different tracks, and those are uh, those are the results with the obstacle. So uh, it's a slightly different uh, from what's showing on the uh, leaderboard website, and those are the uh, results recorded laps, uh, the fastest laps we see on the on the final testing. So as I, as I mentioned before, there's a little difference lagging. It's because we are not taking consecutive uh, screenshots at every frame. We are taking uh, consecutive shots at uh, five frames, uh, like, like every every screenshot for every five uh, frame, we take a screenshot. So that it seems a little laggy, but it's a trade-off we see that uh, uh, that's good enough because like uh, we don't want to run the screen recording while evaluating. That will also slow us down. Yeah. And also for my personal uh, experiment, uh, personal experience when evaluating all those different videos, uh, I see the controllers uh, is submitted uh, along the five different iteration also has huge improvements uh, from uh, the first two iteration. I see some 
uh, you can see here like uh, it's impossible to make uh, some sharp turn whenever it comes to very fast speed and sharp turn. But on the later iterations, I see that the controller uh, basically also goes through uh, a huge improvement and can finish on all different tracks. Mm -hmm. And kind of, uh, so I kind of think of our uh, beta testing with the submission set and the leaderboard set as a, a kind of regression testing uh, that helps with uh, some debugging work on the controller side as well. So, uh, so we are we are as I said, we might bring in more new people to focus on some of the future work. Uh, on the competition side, we might create more diverse tracks with more interesting scenarios. Uh, we also want to create some a more user friendly controller interface. For example, there was a. Uh, uh, concern raised early that we might want to we, we might want to uh take it, we might want to get a PID for different vehicles. So in this year we are only working with the Tesla Model 3 uh model so that uh users uh participants don't need to worry about they, they don't have to implement the Arcman control. They can directly working on the uh, control values, low level control values. Uh, but if we want to take into consideration of different vehicle uh, physics uh, in the future, we might need to come up with a PID, PID controller that can kind of convert the velocity, that, that makes the controller output as velocity and convert the velocity into the throttle brake steering value uh, and also uh, heading. Uh, so on the competition side, there's, there's, uh, there's several things we see that we want to improve. And also on the research direction, uh, uh, as I said before, like many of the controllers from this year, last year's also helps with my own project. Basically, I'm trying to see if there's a faster evaluation uh, method that can be done with surrogate model. Uh, and so that we don't need to run the whole simulation. We can kind of uh, speculate, guess the uh, overall performance of the controller. We also want to see if we have collected like uh, 10 controllers, uh, is it possible that we can learn something from the 10 controllers automatically and synthesize some better controllers from those uh, collected 10 controllers? Uh, those are all interesting research directions that we are also trying to pursue based on this uh, competition, quiz competition as well. Uh, so this, uh, and the last point is that we want to also see generate some scenarios where a controller might fail. This is also benefits the controller development in that you don't have to, we don't have to run this whole simulation uh, in order. Basically, sometimes as you see in the last uh, GIF in the last slide, uh, the controller failed on the last few corners and stuck there. Uh, it does not move forward. So some of the, so if we have to run like a whole lab, to get into that kind of scenario, that might not be very efficient in debugging. So that we are trying to see if we, it's possible that we can generate scenarios uh, where controllers might fail so that uh, the developers can skip the time of the waiting for the whole simulation results. Uh, so that's helping them with the faster debugging. And that basically concludes our this year's presentations. Uh, if there are any questions, we can also talk about it right now. Um, uh, hi, Yamiao, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, so I, uh, I had a question about the deter determinism, right? Because last year you said there was some, uh, I think there was the efforts to try to make it more deterministic and uh, and you guys got rid of Ross. So is it fully deterministic now or are there still sources of uh, non-determinism? So I, so I think there are still sources of little bits and determinism, but I think that's uh, acceptable. Let me go back to the second. So basically for the last few days results, we run the same controller code with exactly the same random seed on the exactly same scenarios. And it's about like, you, it's about like something like this, uh, 69.75, 69.55. So there's still slightly different uh, in the deterministic, 
but that's much better than last year that used ROS. Uh -huh. Any idea where that non-determinism is coming from? So uh, I think the reason is that it's on the color server side. So basically when I read the uh, latest release like documentation and read me, they are saying from like uh, from the uh, color scenario renders 0 0.9, 0 0.13, uh, the traffic manager becomes more deterministic. And before that, even the same run with the same random seed are not very deterministic. So since we upgrade the simulator, the problem is much reduced. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And for the uh for for the last research direction, actually I also check uh exactly one of your group's paper, the coverage guided fuzz testing for cyber physical system. So basically we are also, I think in that paper, your work is mostly focusing on generates like external uh, external like variables uh, that might causing the controller to fail in some CPS system like F1 tens. And we are trying to see if we can not using exactly the same technique, but exploring some techniques to expose the faults in the controllers as well. Oh, no, I'd be interested to, to see what mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, so so that work, it was, um, it was uh, there was an opponent vehicle. And so the non-determinism was coming in from the behaviors of the opponent vehicle. I think Sanis is here, so she can she can explain it a little bit better. I see, I see. Yeah, hi, yeah. Thanks for all the efforts you made, uh, like for the competition. It was nice to were submitting. Of course, uh, most of the work was done by our first technical special, but he's here, he is watching. And uh, yeah, like about the paper, uh, over that, uh, that paper, our goal was to see uh, how can we make the controller fail and uh, like our metric was covered, but it's nice. Uh, I'm curious to know what do you mean by uh, making in the controller fail by other operators. I mean, can you give me a high level idea of what you're going to do? Yeah, sure. So for this bullet point, we haven't uh, proceed too much on this. So basically, the intuition coming from uh, intuition coming from basically this uh, video you see. So on the first part of the track, the controller does very well. Uh, but it wasn't until the later part of the track that it fails and stuck on certain corners. So the intuition coming from, can we detect what that corner is like without running the whole simulation? Yeah, nice. Exactly, and the, our benchmark was about that. And it was like usually most of the failures uh, were occurring at the first and ten, uh, second turn. Uh, and we were like uh, exploring the various ideas to like make the simulation like fail at the first and third turn. But as you said, we were working on the inputs to the control and not uh, on the environment. I, I see. Uh, I see. We, we haven't uh, really go into very details about what that is, but that might be from what I heard, might be slightly different from like uh, the what you want to do. Uh, basically, we, we don't want to involve too many other target vehicles of cycles in this case. We are still trying to see if we can find uh, Basically, it's the controller inputs. Instead of finding like external behaviors, we are trying to find certain controller inputs that will cause the controller to fail. Yeah, nice. Okay. I think uh, there are some hope for that too. Yeah, but we haven't explored that uh, area, but I think it's visible. Sorry, you are kind of breaking off. I, I didn't get that fully. Um, yeah, I'm saying that uh, we didn't explore that area mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, on the coverage. Uh, uh, I was like focusing on the coverage was uh, covering mm -hmm. the uh, environment as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a good approach, and uh, I've, mm -hmm. I feel it's a for uh, this approach. Uh, this mm -hmm. 
I see. I see. I see. Oh, and another thing we also experienced, uh, we didn't include in the slide, but we also briefly like experiments is that using a surrogate model to predict the overall performance. Uh, basically it's saying right now we are checking the performance of the controller using a, uh, uh, by running the whole simulation. Uh, so an alternative approach is that we, instead of running the simulation, we just use neural network to, uh, to, to, to basically it's using the surrogate model for faster evaluation. And how we achieve that is also uh, getting some uh, representation of the controller, uh, getting some representation of the kernel, and send those, the uh, getting the representation of the track and getting the representation of the controller, and then using the two representation uh, by feeding it into a neural network to get the predict, evaluate the, uh, your final score results. It, it's, Sometimes it's for simple tracks, like the first two tracks, it's working very well. So we might also include that as a beta feature for the next year. Pretty nice idea. But the much not for to learn how to evaluate or to learn, uh, for example, to uh, synthesize input for the controller. It's very yeah. nice. So, so synthesis is one route. What I'm saying is another route where we don't synthesis, but we just evaluate existing controller without running the simulation, uh, but using the neural network. So basically we are trying to uh, re replace the simulator with a neural network. The reason is running the simulator takes time uh, and whether it's rendering or the whole feedback loop, but if we can utilize a neural network, that inference time is much reduced. I so see. that can serve as a fast like feedback to, to, to participants on where their controller uh, might crash or if their controller gonna perform well in certain type of track. But how do you guarantee that the neural network is trained very well and like the Exactly like the, if the simulator were running, or if somebody uh, claimed that if you run a simulator, my controller is doing well, but no, your controller is not doing well. This is a good question. Uh, right now, we don't see any theoretical bounds, or mm -hmm. there's no theoretical guarantee that it's work. Basically, we are saying this is a data driven approach, and that uh, uh, we hope it works on testing sites as well. Uh, there, there's uh, some mechanism that we use to ensure that like whenever some confidence level, uh, mm -hmm. we have a confidence uh, function, whenever like the confidence score drops below certain threshold, we say neural, using neural network is not reliable and we have to go back to simulation. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. I will stop the recording, but